Let's take a look and see how we could visualize other multiplications, OK? So let's say 4 times x plus 2, 4 rows of x plus 2. So here's x and here's 2, 4 rows of that. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 x's and 4 times 2. So 4 x's plus 8. Again, look carefully. Let's visualize multiplication. 4 times x plus 2, 4 rows of x plus 2, which is the same as I can just lay all the x's down first, which is 4 times x, and then lay all the 2's down, which is 4 times 2, or 8. Multiplication distributes over addition. That's what we see right here. All right, let's do that. Here's x times x. So here's x times x, and here's the 2, so 2x. Two Can you see? So this is x. This is x plus 2. So x times x plus 2 can be visualized like that. It's the same as saying x times x, which is x squared, Okay, plus what? Plus these things, so which is 1x, 2x, so 2 times x. So 2x and x squared, that's the total here. x squared plus 2x. Multiplication distributing over addition. Can we do that same uh, process here? So we have 23 times 35, which is the same as 23 times 30 plus 5. I can write 35 as 30 plus 5. Multiplication distributes over addition. So let's do that. OK. Now once you have that, we still have to do 23 times 30. So 20 plus 3 times 30. So again, we're using distributive property to multiply. So 30 times 20, 30 times 3, 5 times 20, and 5 times 3. And now let's write it all out. So 600, 3 times 30, 90, 20 times 5 is 100, and 3 times 5 is 15 for a total of 805. Let's do a visualization of that same thing. So we have 20 times 30 here, that's the 600. We have 3 times 30, which is the 90. That gave us the 23 times 30. Now we have, so that's 23 times 30, this first part. Let's look at 23 times 5 now. So 20 times 5, which is this part here, and then 3 times 5, which is the 15 over here. So again, distributive property allows us to visualize it, or you can do it algebraically in this manner. Most of you are probably used to seeing multiplication in this manner. I want you to be able to do all three ways because it will give you a really good sense of what multiplication is. So how do we do that? So write down the numbers. Don't worry about decimal points. We'll worry about decimal points a little bit later. So 5 times 3, which is 15. But as we saw before, 5 times 3, 15. So this is in the 10th spot. So we can do a carryover. 5 times 2, which will give me 10 plus 1 is 11. Right? 10 plus 1 is 11. So that will give me the 115, which is this part right here. Can you see? 5 times 20 and 5 times 3, which is the 115. OK. Then we do what? We put a little 0 here for placeholder, because you're really multiplying 30 times 3. That's why we put a 0 there. And 3 times 3 is 9. So it's technically 90. So that's this 90 that you see here. And then 3 times 2 which will give me 6. So that will give me 600, really, which is this 600 plus 90 right here, 690. And add those two together, which we know how to do. OK? So you can write this. Now, if there were decimal numbers, you do the same thing. But then you count the decimals. So if there was a decimal point here, that would be one decimal point. If there was a decimal point here, that would be 2. And then you would just move your decimal point 1, 2. We'll work on that a little bit later.
All right, try that on your own. So 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 5. So we have 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 5 multiply. I know in America, people say FOIL for this kind of problems. I don't like the word FOIL because somehow it makes it look like it's a different process when you have more than two terms. So I prefer to just say multiplication distributes over addition. It does not matter whether you have two terms, three terms, four terms here or here. You're using multiplication distributes over addition. Keep that in mind and just multiply it out term by term multiplication. And 2x times 3x, 2 times 3 is the 6, and x times x is the x squared. And you keep going down the line. So add like terms together, and then write the final answer. Let's visualize that. So we have 3x plus 5 and 2x plus 3. Just like when we were looking at 23 times 35, look what we have here. This here refers to 2x times 3x. This is the 3 times 3x. This is 2x times 5. This is 3 times 5. You can see how whether you have decimal numbers or polynomials, the multiplication is working out the same way. So when multiplying decimal numbers, you can multiply the numbers without the decimal point and then adjust the decimal. Let's take a look. I said we'll look at this before, so let's take a look. So 4.59 times 64.3. Another way to write our decimals, remember, was writing it in powers of tens. So 459 over 100 is what this decimal is. 64.3 is 643 over 10. Another way to rewrite that would be 459 times 10 to the negative second times 643 times 10 to the negative 1. We have commutative and associative property now, so we can rewrite it. Remember, no matter how I multiply, the order doesn't matter as long as I multiply all of them. So I can multiply 459 and 643 together, 10 to the negative second and 10 to the negative 1. Do you remember what to do with exponents? You add them, good. It's important to remember the basic exponent rules. So 10 to the negative third. So multiply those like normal, and then move the decimal. So look, let's write the numbers here. Not worry about decimals for right now. So 3 times 9, 27. 2 would be carry over. 3 times 5, 15, and 2, 17. So this one will be carried over. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. And so that 13 will have to, this one will have to move into the next place value. OK? Now, we put a 0 here. 4 times 9 is 36. We're going to have to move the 3 as a carryover. 4 times 5, 20, plus 3 is 23. And the 2 will have to carry over. 4 times 4, 16, plus 2 is 18. So that 1 will have to move over into the next place value. Do the six row, the row for six on your own. Remember to put zeros here for placeholders. Pause the video and finish that last row. OK, so six times nine, 54. Five would have to carry over. Six times five, 30. 30 plus five, 35. So three will have to carry over. Uh, six times four is 24, and three is 27. The two will have to move over. And now you want to add. So you already know how to add the decimal. So 7, this will be uh, 13, and 1 will carry over. OK, add all those. That will give you, what, 11. This one will have to carry over. Add those two, 15. One will have to carry over. This will add up to 9, and this will be 2. Now, the decimal number, 10 to the negative third. So the decimal point right now is going to have to move three places to the left. Remember how when we were working with scientific notation, we showed you how to go back and forth? So right now, if there were no decimal places, this is where the decimal point would be. You have to move three places to the left. So 1, 2, 
and 3. So your final answer would be 295.137. You should always have an estimate as to what the answer might be, just so you're in a reasonable ballpark, like in the hundreds, tens, or whatever places. So let's take a look how you would do that. So 459, let's just say it's close to 5. And this is close to 60. 5 times 6 is 30. And we know that 5 times 60 will be 300 about. So if your answer is close to 300, you're good to go. That way you know that you've moved the decimal place in the right spot. Otherwise, if you don't have any estimation skills, and you either punch it in your calculator or do it by hand and got 29,000, then you know something is not right. Or if you got 2.9 something, you know something is not right. So you should have some reasonable estimation of what your answer should be. All right, this next part is going to look at how multiplication is going to be used. So we saw before that fractions, another interpretation of fractions is percentage. So let's do some visual solutions in interpreting percentages. Suppose 15% of a school budget is to be used for school supplies, and the school budget totals $360,000. Question is, what is the amount that you can spend on school supplies? So to visualize that, draw a strip diagram. So I've broken my hole into 10 equal pieces. So each vertical strip represents 10%. This will represent 5% because it's half of the 10. So if this is 36,000, then each of this strip is representing 36,000. So for our 15%, then 36,000 is this whole strip. And half of that, which would be 18,000, will be that 5%. So the total we can spend is 54,000 on school supplies. Okay. If you were to do a multiplication problem, then you would simply do 36,000 times 15%, which is 0.15. So that's the decimal multiplication. This is where we use decimal multiplication. So you do the multiplication at the term. So we did it without the decimal point. Then we have to move the decimal point two places. So 1, 2. So 54,000. So that's how you can do that. Here's your video log.